Hi, uh, my name is Liv and I'm making this video today to talk about how I have completely 100% overcome emetophobia as well as other mental health problems, um, OCD, anorexia, agoraphobia, vaginismus um, and panic attacks and anxiety. Um, so I first, so I believe I've had emetophobia since I was six and I started to get panic attacks in year five. I then developed an awful lot of magical thinking around being sick and obsessiveness about it. And didn't, obviously at that age, didn't realise it was a thing. Um, and then I basically started to have panic attacks every time I ate food or felt full and they were really intense panic attacks and I, at the time I didn't really know what was going on because I feel like there, no one really knew what panic attacks were in the 2000s and then I basically just developed anorexia because of that because I thought logically if I don't eat then I won't get panic attacks and so I very quickly lost lots of weight and developed very anorexic thinking, was hospitalised, put on a drip and then was sent to an inpatient unit referred by CAMS um, uh, as an urgent case and then spent a while in this young person's inpatient unit um, trying to gain weight um, but it was, it, yeah, it was a very interesting experience um, because I didn't really know what was wrong with me or what was going on. I just knew I couldn't eat and so I just really didn't eat. I was sat at the, spent all day sat at the table and the interesting thing I guess when I sort of realised it was about being sick was when I was followed, all the anorexics were followed to the toilet because most of them were bulimic as well and I was like I'm not going to be sick. I'm not going to make myself sick. It was just obviously the worst thing in the world. And so then I sort of realised that and I spoke to the therapist about that and also about how about my fear of germs. And uh, the psychiatrist there did CBT and so they tried to do exposure therapy and CBT and which really didn't help uh, that much. Um, they wanted there was like a family therapy and they licked their shoe and then my mum had to lick her shoe and they had to show me that it was fine and you wouldn't be sick because with the germs but obviously I didn't I couldn't do it I couldn't lick my shoe and they also didn't give any that's all they did that was the exposure they didn't give any support um as to how to cope after you've licked your shoe or cope with these things it was just like exposure and then you'll that'll you'll realize it's fine and then off you go it was just basically bullshit um anyway after that i was off school for two years and developed ocd and agoraphobia in that time so i couldn't leave the house without having a panic attack um in case i was sick in public uh amongst other reasons but that was i guess the main reason um and then i got beth i i sort of Oh yeah, I went to see David Veal because I was having all this CAM support and um, NHS support, which was super helpful, obviously, in just like keeping me afloat, but I wasn't really getting better. I was still anorexic, still had OCD, still had agoraphobia. So I thought, this is to do with being sick. So let's go and see the number one person for emetophobia in the country, which was uh, David Veal and... I went to the Priory in North London to see him with my family uh, in 2006 this was and it was about £200 for an hour and he said that, um, he, 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 he said something quite profound which was do you want on your gravestone uh, live lived a really full and happy life or do you want uh, live had an okay life she didn't really leave the house but at least she wasn't sick. And that was very profound at the time and really helped me. And so I got better quite well over the following months and I managed to go back to school. Um, but then I was sick, <laughs> obviously, and um, got 
anorexic again. Anyway, fast forward a few years and I'm getting a bit better. I go to uni and um, I have vaginismus. I didn't, I didn't even try and have sex because I thought it was wrong and still had all those anorexic ways of thinking that growing up is wrong and be, having sex is wrong. And um, so then I did hypnotherapy for that and um, NLP and I also did it for confidence and public speaking and social anxiety because I had that very bad obviously as well so I was just yeah just not in a good way and then because of this vaginismus because I didn't like that my life was defined by having mental health problems I didn't like that um, but also at the same time I had such strong black and white thinking and beliefs that I couldn't see any other way of living or existing and so then that's the first time I saw a Thrive consultant and it was incredibly life-changing, incredibly profound and helped me realise that there's all these um, ways of thinking which I could control and they really understood me. It was the first time anyone's ever actually understood me uh, who's a therapist um, or in mental health support. And so that was brilliant and I sort of got better from lots of these sort of side things um, and that's when I really realised that emetophobia was the thing that was driving everything and the, the symptoms of emetophobia so I sort of got a little bit better but realised but sort of at the same time thought I was so bad and I had such strong ways of thinking and strong beliefs that I wouldn't get better. Um, and I was also having uh, still loads of panic attacks um, in my life uh, at uni. I, was, I w would walk to lectures, have panic attack, have to go home. On average, I was having about three panic attacks a week. And that had been going on obviously since I was in year five. Um, and so again, I thought panic attacks and anxiety were just a way of life. And um, going to starting Thrive and going through the Thrive program stopped the panic attacks. And that was amazing because looking back at diaries from the mid 2000s, I was writing, I don't think I'll ever get over, I won't ever get over anxiety panic attacks. It's part of who I am. It's a way of life. It's just... I just have to learn to cope with them. So to actually overcome them and not actually be able to get them is was incredible at the time. And obviously it still is. It's just ridiculous because you just think you have to learn to cope with them. You're just one of those people who gets panic attacks. But no, you can just completely get over them, which is incredible. Anyway, so then since then, over the past few years, I've been dipping in and out of Thrive. Um, watching people's testimonial videos who have overcome metaphobia and they've been like, I was sick and it was fine and I I'm, I was absolutely fine and meta you can overcome metaphobia and I was like, so happy for them and I was like, it's brilliant for you. I just don't think that's me. I don't think I'm one of those who will ever get over. I think it's too bad. It's too uh, sort of, I, I, I'm too to be able to get over that or get over any of these other issues. Um, like the eating problems, etc. And um, so, yeah, and um, I was still sort of going through bouts of panic, uh, not panic, but like waking up in the middle of the night, feeling sick and panicking and running around the house and thinking I was going to be sick and just feeling sick all the time, basically, feeling tired all the time. I after uni I went to London and got a job for about two and a half years but I had to quit it um, because of the anxiety and the panic attacks on, and worrying that um, I would catch a bug or be sick um, in the middle of London on the tube or whatever and so then I just worked from home and I didn't really leave the house I worked freelance obviously didn't earn much money um, didn't see people because I was worried about catching something. Last year I was like, my whole life has been essentially defined by having mental health problems. I hadn't really done the things I should have done in my life and was just so upset and sad about it all. Um, and obviously I wanted to kill myself because of that and was quite suicidal. 
and cut myself, which I did in the past as well, the driving thought of my whole life is being sick is the worst thing in the world. If I, I'd rather die than be sick. If I am sick, I will probably kill myself. You know, all of these, all of these very dramatic thoughts, but I've genuinely 100% believed it at the time. I did everything I could up until last year to avoid being sick. Um, obviously not eating much, not really going out the house, holding my breath when I walk past the school so I wouldn't, in case there's any children in the vicinity who have a sick bug or whatever, you know, not going, not going near children, not going near anyone who had a sick bug two days ago or three days or whatever, like not going near people who have been sick or even said they were sick in a month and causing so much worry for myself. Anyway, um, then a year ago, basically, I just decided to put in loads of effort and watched and like because thrive is and it clicked and finally twigged thrive isn't what you do sorry thrive is a thing you do not a thing you are thriving is a thing you do not a thing you are so i had always thought up until that point and this is a fairly learned helplessness way of thinking that thriving was um once i sort of crossed over the wall I would be thriving and that's it. And then didn't, I could just lie back and relax, but it's actually, you have to just put in effort and you actually have to work for it. Just because I've done the program and just read the book about a hundred times, doesn't mean I'm going to be thriving. You actually have to do it and put in effort. So then I put in loads of effort, built up my secondary control, learned to cope with things and tolerate shitty things in life. And um, did the ABCs every day, watched, the videos that Rob put out and was basically better and was, yeah. And, 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 but my perfectionist way of thinking made me think that I wasn't better. I wasn't there. I, there were, I needed to prove that I needed evidence, but uh, I didn't really believe I was better. And then in August of this year, I was sick and, um, was absolutely fine. And it was incredible. And it was very profound because I, realise it's actually not worrying at all. It's not a scary thing at all. You're absolutely, I, I almost enjoyed it. I almost enjoyed those few seconds of being sick. Um, and then, um, yeah, uh, and realised that the 25 years of worry and anxiety of my life was the worst thing and wasting my life was the worst thing. And just for a few seconds of feeling a bit of discomfort. And the brilliant thing is that the times I've been sick in my life, obviously I can remember the exact dates, three exact dates. Um, and the last time was 2011 before this year, um, was the, those times I've been sick, I've developed anorexia almost the day after. And since I was sick in August, I, have not had any eating issues or panic attacks or anxiety or problems. I haven't even worried about being sick, has not crossed my mind, have not obsessed about it, haven't avoided the things that caused my sickness. And yeah, that's amazing. So that's just black and white evidence there that I'm completely 100% over the emetophobia and the eating issues and everything and you know or the narrative at the moment uh in the media is that if you've got mental health problems you just have to learn to cope with them it's a very powerless thing and and i did used to believe that i used to believe it was biological or it was part of me or i would obviously as i said i would never overcome it it's just part of me that's my life now um it's not at all i am 100% over, I couldn't have a panic attack, I'm 100% over all of the issues I listed and I'm absolutely loving life and I'm absolutely thriving and yeah, there's the evidence.